The guards of the concentration camps were known for their brutal and barbaric treatment of inmates and prisoners during the Second World War. After the war, a number of them were sentenced to death and were executed for their evil actions at camps such as Auschwitz, Ravensbrück and Bergen-Belsen. When Belsen was liberated by the British, they found a number of the guards hidden within the prisoner population, trying to escape any form of punishment, and one of those who was found was Irma Grazer. She would later be executed for her crimes, and she became known as one of the most evil women that worked inside of the concentration camps. Irma Grazer was just 22 when she went to the gallows inside Hamlin Prison. She was referred to as a hyena of Auschwitz, or the beautiful beast, but what was her story, and what did she do inside the concentration camps? Join us today as we look at the story of Irma Grazer, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Irma Grazer was born on the 7th of October 1923, inside of a small village named Direction. It was a very rural upbringing for her, and she was raised around 50 miles north of Berlin. Her father, Alfred, was a farmer, and her mother took her own life in 1932, when she was nine years old, and it was believed the marriage problems that she had with her husband may have led to this. But this left Irma and her four siblings without a mother, but her father was considered a man who regularly visited church, but he was very strict and stern with his children, and he often beat them. But he was a man who had a lot of bad feelings towards the Nazis and the rise of Hitler, and he banned his daughters from joining the League of German Girls, the Nazi youth group for young women, where they were taught how to be a housewife and a mother. But Irma and her sister Helene joined the group against her father's wishes, and she became brainwashed by the Nazis, and she indulged in many of their policies. Irma began her indoctrination at the age of 10, when Hitler came into power, and her father had no choice over this, as at the time Nazi education was introduced in all elementary schools. Irma would become an ardent Nazi even at a young age, and at the age of 14 she left school after leaving home. She then worked as a farmhand for six months, before working in Lucien, in a shop as a retail sales clerk. She may have left home due to the rift which was opening up, between her and her father, as he was disgusted by Irma's influence inside of the Nazi party, and how she was beginning to venerate Hitler. Irma, though, was a girl who was not considered the most violent at a young age, and she would often run away from fights and not get involved in them. But at some point she changed completely. In 1939 she went to study nursing, but she went to do this at the Hohenlinschen Hospital, a place where SS members would go to convalesce, around 20 miles from her hometown. This was where many top-ranking Nazis would go to be treated, and she trained, it's believed, under Karl Gebhardt, who would during the Second World War be known as a disgusting and evil doctor who performed shocking medical experimentation. He too would later be executed for his crimes, but it's believed that Irma may have been party to some of these experiments and may have watched as she tried to become a nurse. Whilst here it's likely she became further indoctrinated with the SS also, but she apparently was not good enough to be a nurse, and it was said she was best fit for other lines of work. She was around 17 at the time, but Irma then spoke to one of Gebhardt's friends at Ravensbrück, an all-female concentration camp. She went here for work in April 1941, and was told to come back in six months when she was 18. In the meantime, she worked at a dairy farm and as a machinist, but she then went back to Ravensbrück and she joined the SS as an SS Afserinnen, or a female concentration camp guard. Women were asked to work in this line of employment from all over Germany, and around 2,500 would serve during the Second World War. Irma had to pass a number of exams, and she was also asked questions to ensure she was a Nazi and a strong one, who knew about the party and the race laws. She then was hired to train as a concentration camp guard, and she went through three weeks of hard and difficult training. On one of her first days, she actually apologised to a prisoner who stepped out in front of her, and this was deemed not good enough, and she was then told how to brutally deal with inmates, and how to not be polite to them. She around this time began to have relations with the SS male officers at the camp, and it was said that it appeared that all our Serenans, married or unmarried, had one or more constant SS lovers. She would have indulged in the drinking bouts and parties that the SS had in the evening, but after three weeks she was trained. She then went to participate in many inmate beatings at Ravensbrück, and each month she was making 54 Reichsmarks in salary. She was trained by other sadists, but at the age of 19 it was time for her to move on. 
She received orders that she was going to be transferred to Auschwitz Birkenau, near to Krakow. Before this move, she went home and Irma visited her father, and whilst wearing her full SS uniform, she had a huge argument with him. Her father allegedly struck her during this, and he then told her never to come home. But when she got to Auschwitz, Irma Grazer was assigned to the women's camp at Birkenau, and this was the main extermination part of the site where thousands were killed in the gas chambers. She had a number of duties there, including commanding the gardening squad, working on the telephones, and even being in control of the mail. She then in May 1944 became an Oberaufseherin, and she was given the task of commanding over 30,000 female prisoners in Birkenau's B22C camp. She then in this role became infamous, and she would wear heavy boots and would carry her pistol and whip at all times. Grazer became known as a beautiful beast, or the blonde angel of hell, and she often wore expensive perfumes and tormented the women on a daily basis. One former doctor of Auschwitz described her as the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. Her face has an angelic clarity, and her blue eyes were the liveliest and most innocent eyes imaginable. Another said, It defied belief that such a pretty girl could be so cruel. When she walked through the camp with a whip in her hand, she was surrounded by a cloud of choice perfume. Grazer often stole valuables and clothing from the prisoners inside Auschwitz, but she would use her weapons to kill. She would use her whip to attack the women, and sometimes these injuries led to infections, which women would suffer. Doctors would then be forced to operate on the women with dirty equipment, and no anaesthetics. She would then witness these operations, and it was said, Emma Grazer invariably arrived to watch the operation, kicking the victim if her screams interfered with her pleasure, and giving her completely the spasms which shook her entire body, and made saliva run down the corner of her mouth. She was also known for shooting inmates at will whenever she liked it. But she also had dogs that she would use to strike fear into prisoners' hearts. During one incident, she was on a bicycle with her dog at the side of her, and any prisoner who could not keep up during a 16km walk to work was attacked by the canine. One witness of her actions involving the dog said, We were loading the lorries. Before noon, we had an unexpected visitor, Afsarin Irma, with her two leashed dogs. Frau Afsarin Irma, blonde, with an angel face and snake eyes, the camp's chief torturer. We were very careful not to attract her attention. We pushed and pushed. It seemed to take an eternity to roll the car over the hill. The next team was unable to coordinate its efforts. They were completely unnerved by our visitor. They hesitated and lost control of their wagon. It swayed, bowled down the hill, and capsized, scattering stone over the whole area. The prisoners were completely broken in spirit. Asserin Irma set the two dogs on them. The girls tried to escape their fangs, but the trained killers easily overtook them. One grabbed a Polish woman which slipped on a rock. The other fell upon a Russian girl. At Irma's orders, the Carpo underlings beat and kicked the girls, still untouched by the dogs. The Carpo wrote down the numbers of the delinquent team. The dogs were tearing at the girls' bodies. Irma came closer to observe what they were doing. Her eyes were bloodshot. The sight of the blood seemed to intoxicate her. She panted. We stood in a trance, as it had a gladiatorial combat. Irma Grazer was also involved in the selection processes, and she would regularly decide with doctors such as Joseph Mengele, who would live and who would die. She even, it's believed, had an affair with Mengele, as well as other men and women, including female prisoners, and when she got bored of them, she would send them to their deaths. Grazer did fall pregnant, and she forced the inmate doctor to perform a termination on her, and she even supplied the instruments required, and the doctor did perform this procedure. She did fall in love with an SS man, though, Franz Wolfgang Hatzinger, who was the chief engineer of Auschwitz I's construction element, and the pair would meet up in the evenings. But as the Second World War turned against the Germans, Irma Grazer's work at Auschwitz came to an end, as the camp was evacuated with the Red Army on the horizon. She was transferred to Ravensbrück briefly on the 18th of January 1945, but then in March 1945 she arrived at Bergen-Belsen. Belsen was a site in complete breakdown, as huge numbers of inmates were evacuated there, and she was reunited with many of her former colleagues of Auschwitz, such as Joseph Kramer. Whilst at Belsen, Emma Grazer continued to be brutal, and she would force inmates to stand or kneel for long periods of time, and at roll call they had to hold rocks above their heads. They were forced to stand in the cold, 
and if someone struggled, she would beat them with her truncheon. Even as the Allies were close by to liberating Belsen, she was still brutalising inmates. Irma Grazer remained at the camp as the Allies seized control, and she was there to allegedly maintain law and order. She had the chance to run, but decided against it. She was not immediately arrested, and was forced to help bury the over 10,000 corpses that were lying around. She was then arrested on the 17th of April 1945, and many heard about her evil actions, and she was temporarily imprisoned in a Wehrmacht tank training academy nearby. She said, It was our duty to exterminate antisocial elements, so that Germany's future would be assured. Further interrogation went on, and she was then a few months later indicted with others, on charges of execution, murder, ill-treatment and barbarism at Belsen and Auschwitz. She was brought to the Belsen trials, and during the trial it was said she was more bothered by her appearance than the charges that were brought against her. Throughout the trial she remained calm, and she remained unemotional when the evidence was put forward. Witnesses described seeing Irma Grazer shooting prisoners at point-blank range, and one said she was beaten by Grazer, and that some were even beaten to death. When the trial came to an end, Irma Grazer was sentenced to death alongside two other women, Elizabeth Volkenrath and Johanna Bormann. She was taken from her cell and following this Grazer was known to be crying. She was then sent to Hamlin Prison to await her execution and it was Albert Pierpoint who would take her life. On the 13th of December 1945, Grazer was to face a hangman and she was the second to die that day as Elizabeth Volkenrath was to die first. It was said of her execution... We climbed the stairs to the cells where the condemned were waiting. A German officer at the door leading to the corridor flung open the door and we fired past the row of faces and into the execution chamber. The officers stood at attention. Brigadier Patton Walsh stood with his wristwatch raised. He gave me the signal and a sigh of release breath was audible in the chamber. I walked into the corridor. Irma Grazer, I called. The German guards quickly closed all grills on 12 of the inspection holes and opened one door. Irma Grazer stepped out. The cell was far too small for me to go inside. I had to pinion her in the corridor. Follow me, I said in English, and O'Neill repeated the order in German. At 9.34am, she walked into the execution chamber, gazed at a moment for the officials standing round it, then walked into the centre of the trap, where I had made a chalk mark. She stood on this mark very firmly, and as I placed the white cap over her head, she said in her languid voice, Schnell. The drop crashed down, and the doctor followed me into the pit, and pronounced her dead. After twenty minutes, her body was taken down, and placed in a coffin, ready for burial. Emma Grace was one of the most notorious war criminals of the Second World War, and she was known for being a murderer and a brutal guard, who was too happy to beat people with her whip and other weapons. She took many lives with her pistol and was sentenced to death for her crimes. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.